All right, what's up everybody? I am super excited to be here to do a quick tabletop review of the all new EXO R1 helmet from Scorpion. I'm gonna go over some of the new features of the helmet and also compare it to the previous generation R2000. One of the first things I wanted to point out is the safety ratings on the new helmet. It is both DOT and ECE certified. Now this particular model here is the Alvaro Bautista replica. And then I also have, luckily enough for me, is the Fabio Quattararo replica. Check that out. Now one quick note about each of these models. They are going to be a limited production run of these replicas. The Bautista replica, they're only going to do 400. The Quattararo replica, they're only going to do 500. So if you do want one, I suggest ordering it now before they're gone. Um, speaking of that, big shout out to Scorpion. Big thank you to them for providing me with one of each of the replicas. They, they look amazing. So when you get your new helmet, what's in the box? So obviously you'll get your helmet, you'll get a clear shield, you'll get a dark shield, you'll get your manual, you'll get a sleeve for your extra shield, and then you'll also get a set of pinlock inserts. One nice upgrade that they've made, one change to the R1 versus the R2000 is both of the shields you get out of the box are both tear off and pinlock ready. With the R2000 previously, you did get a clear shield and a dark shield, but if you wanted ones that were pinlock and or tear off ready, you had to order those separately. So it was really cool to see that added in that, and that you get those right away from Scorpion. So what does this R1 share DNA wise from the R2000? What are some of those familiar features that those that have had an R2000 are gonna recognize? Well, starting out, you'll notice they still have the familiar chin curtain, that air fit system, emergency release cheek pads, similar layout there. You've got the breath deflector here, and then there's still cutouts on the liner. You're not gonna be able to see them from here but there are still cutouts for glasses as well as for speakers. It's nice that they've retained that. And then beyond that, everything's pretty much new. So like I said, the shields have the tear off in pin lock. And then the shield also has this new center latch system. The R2000 previously had the side detent and then it had the locking mechanism on the rear. And as you can see, the venting layouts in a similar placement, got a little bit different look and feel to it. They've also done away with the side vents that were previously on the R2000, which I think is fine. I never really noticed uh, a big difference whether I had those open or closed. So I think they just tried to simplify things and streamline it, which again, I think is, think is totally fine. One of the other biggest differences I noticed, other than the feeling of the liner, and then the layout is the weight. It felt significantly lighter than my R2000. And I never thought my R2000 was necessarily heavy, but this definitely felt significantly lighter. I did weigh them both, and the R2000 came in at three pounds, 11 ounces, and then the R1 came in at three pounds, six ounces. So a little over a quarter pound of weight loss. I'm pretty excited about that. I was actually surprised I expected the weight to be higher. It, it felt like it weighed more than a quarter pound less, but that's just me. So I also wanna do a quick little 360 here and kind of compare the profiles and the shapes of each helmet. So we've got the, uh, the front here, got the sides, To me, it looks like the way they, they redid the shape a little bit. It's got a little bit more of an arrow, kind of comes to the point here with the way the, the rear spoiler is laid out. So that was kind of nice. And then from the back, you can kind of see it. The taper to the bottom is a little bit narrower. Again, a little bit more of an arrow shape. A little bit of a, a weight savings there. And then we'll also do kind of the top profile. Kind of see that, hopefully. Now I haven't had a chance to ride in the helmet yet. It's still the middle of winter here. We just got another 10 inches of snow, 
but I will be going down south to do some riding here in a couple weeks. So I'll have an actual ride review then. I mean, I actually will have a couple of friends who also have the new R1 helping out with some review as well. So we'll be able to get some differing opinions and thoughts on the new R1 helmet. So pretty excited for that. In the meantime, if anybody has any questions, want to see any additional pictures or views of the helmet, just hit me up. Thanks.